The Million Dollar Mermaid, starring Esther Williams as Annette Kellerman and Walter Pigeon as Alfred Harper. This is the story of Annette Kellerman. I met her when I was manager of the Hippodrome in New York City. But the real beginning of her story starts years before and thousands of miles away in a town in Australia. As a child, Annette was a cripple with heavy braces on her legs. One afternoon, she disappeared. When her frantic father finally found her... But, Daddy, I'm all right. All I did was go in swimming. Oh, the water's just wonderful, Daddy. Annette, my baby. In heaven's name, whatever possessed you, you... You might have drowned. Oh, but I can't drown, Daddy. I've learned to swim. Oh, darling, you know what the doctor said. That your legs would never be strong enough for what other children do. My legs are strong. Look, I can even walk without my no, no, braces. No, 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 you'll, you'll fall. Oh, sweetheart, you, you mustn't be envious of the others. Oh, I'm not, Daddy. Not since I can swim. And how can anything hurt you when it makes you feel so good? Oh, please let me come back and swim again. You really want to? More than anything. Then we'll come back here and swim every day. Oh, thank you, Daddy. Thank you. As the years hurried by, the iron braces were discarded and forgotten. And that became an expert swimmer. And a gleaming array of silver loving cups stretched across the shelf in the study of her father's conservatory of music. And then, as a young woman, she won the most cherished award of all. Amateur champion of New South Wales. Why, it's wonderful, darling. I'm very proud of you. Only why does it always have to be a cup? What we really need is a new tea service. <laughs> and that, uh, if you're wondering why I wasn't there to watch you this afternoon, I... Well, I, I've been going over some business matters. Oh, times are bad for everyone, Daddy. I... The few pupils we have left hardly pay expenses. I, I've decided to close the conservatory. Yeah. No, 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 no. We're not charity cases yet, I've heard from Mr. Crocker. Mr. Crocker from London? He's offered me a post as his assistant. I think I should accept. Well, Dad, if, if it's just a question of money, well, I could teach swimming or turn professional or... No, forget it, my dear. Swimming has given you back your health, and for that I'm eternally grateful. But as a career, no. Your music comes first. Music and the ballet. And in London, you can study with the very best. Well, there's one thing I know, Dad. There's a lot of silver in those loving cups. So don't worry, darling. The Kellermans will always eat. Among the passengers on the long voyage to England was a young fellow named Sidney. Sidney was a kangaroo. And I'm not going to warn you again, Mr. Selvin. If you let that kangaroo out of the old just once more, I'll put him off at the next port and you with him. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, Percy, but, well, Sidney isn't just a kangaroo. He's a boxer, a prize fighter, greatest left hook in the business. I don't question that. Just look at my jaw. Hey, Doc, take Sidney down to the hole. I'll have to forget his road work and put on the gloves, though, and give him some exercise. Come on, champ. Let's go. I, uh, I hope we didn't scare you too much. Oh, no, we're very fond of kangaroos. Good, good. You, uh, you're bound for London, too? Yes. My daughter's going to study the ballet. Well, you must be my guests at Sydney's opening. I'll be at the Greenwich Carnival. Well, that's very kind of you. Yeah, just ask for Jimmy Sullivan. Sullivan's Wonder Show. Uh, my name is Kellerman. My daughter, Annette. Annette Kellerman, a mm -hmm. swimmer? Well, I've read about you in the newspaper. Yes, my daughter just won the Amateur Freestyle Championship of New South Wales. Set a new record, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but you did. Well, swimming's very popular in Australia. Yes, I can understand why. Well, I hope Sydney's a big success, Mr. Sullivan. Come along, dear. For the next day or two, the enthusiastic Mr. Sullivan was rarely out of Annette's sight. And then, on a lovely tropical evening with the deck bathed in moonlight and the music of the ship's orchestra in the background... I can't figure it out, Annette, how, how a girl as pretty as you are can break swimming records and how a girl who breaks swimming records can insist on ballet dancing as a career. Well, what's wrong with the ballet? Oh, I don't know. I guess I've always associated it with underfed French girls and swans. Oh, and I'm more the plump duck type. Oh, no, 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 no. I mean, <laughs> well, whatever type you are, it, it, it must be my type. 
Well, I'm delighted to hear that. Oh, now, wait a minute. Don't be angry. It's, well, it's, it's just that I don't know how to say it. it two days ago, I, I meet a girl for the first time, and, well, I, I, I can't get her out of my mind. Annette, there's, there's something I've got to ask you. I, I, I can't stand it any longer. Well? Annette, I, I want to manage you. Manage? Did you say manage? Well, what's the matter? <laughs> well, nothing. Nothing at all. Oh, I'm sorry. Look, I know a great bet when I see you. When you're a wonderful swimmer, you're a beautiful girl. They'll come to see you in London by the tens of thousands. And they'll pay for the privilege. Pay to see me swim? That's where I come in. Ideas, new effects. Zip, I can see you now. Annette Kellerman, the Australian mermaid. She's half woman, half fish. How nice. Shall we shake fins on her? Oh, now you don't believe me. I'll build you a little tank. Make you up to look like a real mermaid. Scaly tail and all. You'll be a bigger draw than a kangaroo. I doubt it, Mr. Sullivan. Oh, oh, uh, good evening, Mr. Kellerman. Mr. Sullivan, my daughter is not half woman, half fish. She is, I assure you, all woman. Well, I, uh... I couldn't agree with you more. Nor is she interested in wearing a mermaid's tail. Well, Mr. Kellerman, I only... We don't wish to discuss it any further. But it's the greatest yes, idea... Yes, I know. Since Sydney, the kangaroo. <laughs> Come along, Dad. But uh, you get an ace for effort, Mr. Sullivan. <laughs> The Kellermans reached London, but they'd come halfway around the world only to learn the crushing news that they'd come for nothing. The Crocker Conservatory music was closed. But surely there was some message for you, Dad. Someone must have been there. Just the caretaker. Mr. Crocker's dead. Oh. Been dead almost a month. I don't know what to do, Annette. Our, our funds are all but gone. Well, there, there's one thing we can do. We can move out of this hotel. We'll find a couple of rooms somewhere and... Well, we'll go to work. Right now, I, I can't even think. Well, that's good. Then you can't worry. Now, just remember, Dad, the Kellermans will always be. Yes, the Kellermans got by thanks to those silver loving cups. One by one, they disappeared at the pawnbroker. And then, early one evening, Annette had visitors. Young Mr. Sullivan and his friend, Doc. How in the world did you know where we were? Simply by following the cab that brought your baggage over from the hotel. Oh, but that was two weeks ago. Uh, yes, yes. Well, uh, we've been kind of busy. Oh. Dad's out right now, but sit down, won't you? Well, well, thank you. Uh, what smells so good? Oh, I'm making an Australian stew. Australian stew? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's same as Irish, only the meat's down under. <laughs> well... Why don't you stay for dinner and find out for yourself? Oh, but we couldn't possibly stay. I mean, just walking in like this? <laughs> no, 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 we couldn't. Well, there's plenty, and I insist. Now, while I set the table, you can tell me all about the kangaroo. How is Sidney? Sensational. He's developed a one-two punch. Yeah, and I've got the nose to prove it. Look at this. Oh, dear. Yeah, he's the greatest act ever to be put under a tent. There's only one thing wrong. No one knows about it. <laughs> and that's where you come in. Where I come in? Annette, listen. Once we get enough people down to the carnival, the rest will take care of itself. So, well, so we thought maybe you'd like to make a little money. Hmm. But, but how? Well, the idea I had in mind was to swim down the Thames River, maybe five or six miles, ending up at the carnival at Greenwich. Oh, we'd follow you in a rowboat, of course. If, uh, if Sydney could swim, we wouldn't bother you. We'll, we'll, we'll pay you five pounds and 50% of the first day's proceeds. Well... Well, if you're going to stage a swim, why don't you make it a real swim? Six miles won't impress anybody. Twenty-six miles, Mike. Twenty-six miles? Mm -hmm. I can't even row that far. <laughs> Annette, you, uh, you're not joking. Of course not. Well, if you mean that, why, I'll stay in this town on its ear. I'll notify the newspapers. We'll really ballyhoo it. Why, Sydney, I'll have to fight off the customers. And you'll give me five pounds. You need the money badly, don't you? Well, yes, we could use a little. Oh, I'll swim on just one condition, though. My father isn't to know about it until it's all over. You've got a deal. Well, that's good. Now, sit down and have some stew. Uh, remember those cups I won that Dad told you about? Well, of course we remember. <laughs> well, you may not be aware of this, gentlemen, but you are about to dine on the freestyle championship of New South Wales. <laughs> <laughs> Annette started her swim at dawn the next morning. But the crowd James Sullivan had counted on somehow wasn't there. No one was there. It was a cold morning thick with fog. But Annette needed that five pounds, so she kept swimming. 
slowly, gradually, the news got around. Clusters of people gathered on the bridges, some joked, some cheered. But as the hours dragged by, Doc and Jimmy knew she'd never make it. What's the matter with you, Doc? Pull those oars. I'm doing the best I can. The tide. It's a mill race. It's like a war. The fog's getting worse, too. Oh, well, we'll still get publicity. Swing alongside of her, Doc. We'll pull her in. Yeah. This is it, huh? Yeah, I know when we're licked. But I can let her kill herself for five pounds. Uh, look, maybe if I we... I said if we're going to little... pull her in. This is it, honey. Come on aboard. No. No, I'll make it. Don't be foolish. There's always another time. No, Jimmy, please. Look, you'll kill yourself fighting this tide. I, I can't give up now. I just can't. How, how much farther do I have to go? I wish I could tell you. With a fog like this, I, I can't see the landmarks. Uh, I, I think it's starting to lift. It doesn't matter. We'll get you ashore and... No. No, not yet. Jimmy. Hmm? Jimmy, look. Straight ahead. It's Greenwich. It's Greenwich. How far off? About a, about a mile away. Can you hold out, honey? Sure. I'll make it, Jimmy. I know I will. What do you think of a girl like that? Annette's phenomenal swim brought Londoners by the droves down to Sullivan's Carnival. But it wasn't Sydney, the boxing kangaroo, that they wanted to see. Jimmy, we're selling tickets for the wrong attraction. Yeah, poor Sidney. Looks like you swam him right out of his career. <laughs> this just doesn't make sense. The whole idea was for Sidney. Annette, you've made this swim without consulting me. Oh, well, Dad... I, I'm not complaining about that. I'm very proud of you. But if you think you've rested enough, I suggest we go home. Oh, just one thing, Professor, and you might as well face it now. Your daughter is now a celebrity. Yes, I've seen the newspapers. She's already had a dozen offers. Offers? What kind? Every kind. Personal appearances, swimming events, diving exhibitions. Why, the Crystal Palace wants to know if you can sing. And there's a newspaper that wants to sponsor a series of swims at beach resorts. They offered eight pounds a week. Well, you didn't let them get away, did you? You, you accepted? No. Well, what offers did you accept? None. Then what do you propose, Mr. Sullivan? I propose to stage a show, our own show, a water carnival. A water carnival? Well, why not? It's something brand new. I'll even give you the ballet, a water ballet set to music. Well, just a moment. Where could you stage such an event? Where could you find a tank big enough for all this? The tank's already built and waiting for us. Did you ever hear the Hippodrome? In New York? Yeah. My oh, dear boy, really? 3,000 miles of ocean. Well, what of it? It's the biggest tank in the world and the largest theater in the world. And the longest swim in the world to get there. What? <laughs> Jimmy, Dad and I couldn't pay for a trip to Liverpool, let alone... Who said anything about that? Anyone who travels with Sullivan gets all expenses paid. Look, I happen to know Alfred Harper personally. He runs the Hippodrome. And he's showman enough to go for this idea in a second. Well, how can you afford the fares? I thought you were... were well, that is, uh, broke? Perhaps, but I've got such confidence in this that I'm willing to sacrifice my entire asset. What asset? Sydney. The kangaroo. Oh, Jimmy, no. There's a circus in town. I've already got an offer for him. Ah, oh, you, you ready, old pal? Hey, see? Even Sidney approves. Get his leaf stock. Oh, come on. Now, don't take it too hard, Sidney. It's, well, it's just part of show business, that's all. One minute you're up, one minute you're... Ooh! Flat on the floor. Not a boy, Sidney. That's showing him. <laughs> Get him out of here. We'll meet you at the steamship office at 12 o'clock. As far as I was concerned, Annette Kellerman was just another pretty girl on the day when Jimmy Sullivan brought her into my office at the Hippodrome. As for Jimmy's great idea, well, I, I, I just couldn't take a chance. Uh, what chance are you taking, Mr. Harper? You admit the idea is good? A large part of our success is big names, Jimmy. You saw the billboards out there, Houdini, Marceline the Crown, Pavlova. But you want me to star an unknown girl. Mr. Harper's right, Jimmy. Nobody knows you here. Well, they know you in England. They know you in Australia. Look at these press clippings, Mr. Harper. Headlines, columns. Yes, they're very impressive, but I can't build a show around a swimmer. And that isn't just a swimmer. Well... And this water carnival idea is tailor-made for the Hippodrome. Look, Jimmy. We stayed spectacles here, of course. But everyone has a plot, a story. It isn't that I don't like the idea, but I... Uh, Miss Kellerman, uh, can you do anything besides swim? I might uh, be needing some showgirls. Well, I can dance. Good. If you're interested, come back and see me on Monday. I'm afraid that's the most I can offer right now. Thank you, Mr. Harper. No. No, I won't let you. 
a showgirl when you could be the biggest attraction... I they... can argue with you about that outside, Jimmy. Mr. Harper's pretty busy. Thank you, Miss Kellerman. Well, you thank her again someday. You wait and see. I wouldn't be surprised if you're right. Good luck, Jimmy. Well, that's that, I guess. We're back where we were, out in the street. It isn't your fault, Jimmy. It was a good idea. And I went into it with my eyes open. Well, you better take that, John. There's lots worse than being a showgirl at the Hippodrome. Hmm. And you and Doc? Well, we can go back to Boston, where we came from. I can always find a concession or something at Revere Beach. Jimmy, I have to make some money. It's Dad I'm thinking about. He isn't well. I'm afraid to think what one, one more of these uncertainties will do to him. His whole life is music, loving it and teaching it. If I could only help him start his conservatory again. You can. How? No, 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 forget it. I'm not going to sell you on something else and have it fizzle out. You go to work for Harper. It's safe and expensive. Mm, I need more than just expenses. Jimmy, how much can you make out of a concession? If it clicks, plenty. Look, all we have to do is scrape enough money together to buy a tank, and then we... No, look, I told you to forget it. It's too much of a long shot, and I've only got six dollars left. I still have three silver cups. That'd be enough to get us to Boston, wouldn't it? Maybe. What's on your mind? Well... We swam down the Thames to get publicity, didn't we? Keep talking. Suppose we did the same thing here. A marathon swim from somewhere, anywhere. No, not anywhere. From Revere Beach. Oh, baby, I knew we were a team from the very first time I saw you. I'll get enough backing for ten tanks, not just one. Jimmy, do you think so? Who's going to stop us? Just tell me that. Who's going to stop us? Who's going to stop them? Well... They were stopped by nothing less than the stoppingest institution in the land, the law. Annette had planned a 20-mile swim, starting at Revere Beach. But as she walked down to the water, the crowd on the beach stared speechless and goggle-eyed. Annette was wearing a one-piece bathing suit. Well, they weren't speechless for long. I can hardly believe my eyes. Mommy, Mommy, look at you. Oh, this is ridiculous, Jimmy. Please, can't I start now? There's a photographer I'm expecting as soon as he gets here. Now, look, don't let them bother you, honey. These same people will be cheering when you come back. Jimmy, let me start. Well, well, all right, go ahead. And don't worry about anything. Just a minute. What do you think you're doing? Officer, this is Annette Kellerman, the famous Australian swimmer. She's about to embark on a 20-mile swim. Not in that outfit. Why, this is disgraceful. Officer, I'm going to try to swim 20 miles. How can I swim in, in what those women are wearing? I'd drown in an outfit like that. Just cover yourself, miss, and hurry up about it. Come on, Jimmy, let's get out of here. Not on your life. You've done nothing wrong, and I won't let anyone intimidate you. Well, just for that, you're under arrest. You're both under arrest. Annette Kellerman arrested for indecent exposure. Australian girl causes near riot at Revere Beach. One-piece bathing suit shocks Boston seaside. Indecent exposure. Held for trial. Oh, those hypocrites, those sanctimonious blue-nosed hypocrites. Oh, Dad... What are we going to do? No, no, dear. Hey, the lobby's full of reporters. If they want to know, can they come up now? Well, tell them to go away. Tell them I've left town. Well, as far as I'm concerned, this is the greatest thing that ever happened. The greatest? I, I, I'm booked and fingerprinted and arrested like a common criminal, and you say that... Don't you the... realize who you are now? You're the standard bearer for all American womanhood. In your hands lies the power to break the shackles of prudery and convention. But go ahead. Run away if you want to. But I tell you, this is more than a trial. It's more than newspaper headlines. This is a crusade. Bravo. Huh? I said bravo. But it's up to you, Annette. You can pay the fine and leave Boston tonight, or you can accept the challenge and go to court. Doc, you tell those reporters to come on up here. I'll give them a story. Bathing suit and all. <laughs> I suppose the entire country knew about Annette Kellerman and her one-piece bathing suit by the time she appeared in that court in Boston. The prosecutor's job was fairly easy. After all, Annette admitted everything. And has brazenly flaunted every statute of decency. Your Honor, her guilt is incontestable. She admits she wore the garment in question. I admit no such thing. What's that? You deny you appeared before several hundred men, women, and children on Revere Beach clad in a flimsy piece of material that barely covered... I admit I wore a one-piece bathing suit. I do not admit it was indecent. Then what would you call it? Your 
your arms and shoulders completely exposed. Not to mention your calves and legs. Also my ankles, my toes, my knees, and my fingers. Your Honor, this flagrant disrespect is nothing... I object, Your Honor. Are you the attorney for the defense? No. Then sit down before I ask you to leave. (laughs) Uh, Miss Kellerman, is there anything more you wish to add? Yes, Your Honor, there is. You see, I've been swimming in competition all my life. And the only way I've been able to compete successfully is by wearing a man's one-piece racing suit. After all, sir, you can't deny me my right to swim, can you? No, certainly not. Well, then how is it possible to swim a race tied up in a corset and ten yards of wet drapery? Uh, Miss Kellerman, please, I'm not the one on trial here. (laughs) I'm sorry, sir. Your Honor, do the authorities object to the one-piece bathing suit or to the fact that the limbs are not entirely covered? Oh, I see no reason to base any decision on the number of pieces in an article of clothing. Ah, well, then perhaps I can suggest a compromise. Now, here in this box is the original racing suit. There, you see? The same suit? Uh Uh-huh, except that I've sewn some stockings on the bottom and a jersey on the top. And as you can see, this will cover the entire body except the forearms and the head. I consider this shocking, Your Honor. I consider it rather ingenious. And uh, this is the bathing suit you'll use in the future? Yes, Your Honor, or others like it. In that event, Miss Kellerman, this case is dismissed. Thank you! Once again, Annette's name was all over the newspapers, and the crowds poured in to see her perform at Jimmy Sullivan's concession at Revere Beach. Week after week, the money rolled in. And week after week, Jimmy became more and more certain that Annette meant a great deal more to him than just the source of his income. And one day, while Doc was counting up the receipts... Ah, you know something, Jimmy. Sometimes I wish we had that kangaroo again. We didn't make so much money, but I didn't have all this bookkeeping to worry about. Uh, Now, look here. Take this item here. Personal, $200. What's the idea? Take a look, Doc. Is this personal enough? Diamond ring. Well, did you ask her yet? Today's the day, Doc. Season here closes real soon, and I... And you want somebody to keep your feet nice and warm at night. Great, but what about me? Doc, I've got an idea for something brand new. A great idea. A swimmer and a flyer. Flyer? That Bud Williams act is dynamite. Do you know he can actually take that contraption 400 feet off the ground? Nah, I don't like it. It's against nature. Can't you see that big new poster now? Sullivan's combined shows. King of the air, queen of the sea. Oh, don't get me wrong. Annette will still be our number one attraction, but well, we can dream, can't we? Well, here she comes, dreamer. Hi, I'm not late, am I? I'll go out and sell them tickets. Uh, whose carriage is that out there? A man named Aldrich. I had lunch with him in town. Aldrich? Uh-huh. He has a lecture bureau. He's offering me a great deal of money, Jimmy, just to do a series of lectures. Oh, what kind of lectures? Well... He says he sees me in a very dignified presentation, telling about the body beautiful and, and perhaps a ballet exhibition. <laughs> oh, no. Well, what's the joke? <laughs> we close here in another week and I... <laughs> Darling, I'm sorry, but one of us must be nutty. Can you imagine yourself up on a platform with a pitcher of water and a ballet, dancing around in some gauze window curtains? Well, for the kind of money he offered me, yes. I don't see anything funny about it at all. Oh, you will. So will the public. You mean this is so much better? So much more dignified, so much more cultured? Swimming around in a in a two-by-four tank like a trained seal in a, a cheap carnival with a fat lady on one side and a fire eater on the other. Oh, now, wait a minute. Well, that's what Mr. Aldridge thinks about it. Put on your suit, Annette. The show starts in 20 minutes. <laughs> Jimmy, come on in. Well, you, uh, you were great just now, as usual. <laughs> Bet we turned away 200 people. Is that what you came to tell me? No, I came to tell you I'm sorry. A big mouth of mine. Oh, Jimmy, we shouldn't quarrel. Not about this lecture business, anyway. But it must be important to you, Russell. Look, we came here for one reason only. Money. Anything that offers us more money is more important. Darling, it's $500 a week for 10 weeks. I see. And it puts me that much closer to the Kellerman Conservatory. You're doing this for your father, is that it? Well, in a way, yes. And it isn't as though we were splitting up. 
I'll talk to Aldrich. I'm sure there'll be an important job for you. Yeah, like uh, filling the water pitcher? Jimmy. Or pinning up the drapes. Or maybe I could come out first and give a short talk on how high class we are. Look, baby, somewhere along the line, we got our signals crossed. You got it in your head that you're Joan of Arc or something. Well, get it out fast. You're a swimmer doing a tank act in Sullivan's Water Carnival, and it's not a bad show either. And how long can it last? After all, all we're doing is capitalizing on a lot of cheap bathing suit publicity. Well, what's Aldrich got in mind that's any different? He's cashing in on the same dodge, a ballyhoo that I arranged. You arranged? Well, who do you think got that cop to arrest you in the first place? Oh, no, Jimmy, you didn't. Didn't I? How, how can you stand there? What about all the talk about a crusade and Bunk. how I was... Bunk, who cares what a lot of females wear on the beach as long as I can keep you in a one-piece bathing suit? Baby, you're a swimmer. You belong in the water. Wet, you're terrific. Dry, you're just a nice girl who ought to settle down and get married. Well, thank you. I'm very grateful for the advice. But if and when I do get married, it will never be to a cheap, stubborn flea circus proprietor. This flea circus does all right for the fleas in it, except when they jump out of their cages. You want to be a toe dancer? Okay, honey, be a toe dancer and see what happens. <laughs> When the carnival closed, Annette went to Aldrich, not to accept his offer, but to turn it down. It was then that I re-entered her life. We changed our policy at the Hippodrome, and I have sent her a telegram asking her to come to New York. What's the matter, Dad? Aren't you excited about it? Alfred Harper, the New York Hippodrome. Yes, it sounds wonderful, dear. Oh, this is just what Jimmy always said I should do, and... What is oh. it, Annette? What's wrong? Oh, don't you know? Yes, I... I think I do. Take that telegram to Jimmy. Let him read it for himself. There's nothing like good news to patch up a lover's quarrel. Now run along and find Jimmy and tell him. Oh, I just don't get it, Annette. Jimmy's on his way to Florida. You mean he hasn't told you? Florida? No. No, he didn't tell me, Doc. Yeah. I'm leaving myself tomorrow. Well... Why Florida? Oh, it's that new act he's working on, flying machines. Jimmy and that, that Bud Williams guy. Oh, I see. Well, tell him, tell him if he finds time that he, he might drop me a postcard. Yeah, that, that dumb Bostonian. Tell him he can find me at, at the New York Hippodrome. Good luck, Doc. Annette Kellerman, performing in the huge tank on the stage of the Hippodrome, was a spectacular success. My one hope was that she'd stay with us. I don't have to read the new contract, Alfred. If you think I should sign, just give me a pen. I'd work at the Hippodrome for almost nothing. Well, I assure you, you won't be working for nothing, Annette. You know, you've been wonderful. Thank you, Alfred. I'm, uh, uh, I'm giving a little supper party for Pavlova Saturday night after the show. Can you come? Well... May I let you know later? Well, that means no, doesn't it? And that... Don't you ever go out? Never. Oh, hello, Dad. I'll be ready in a moment. I'm trying to persuade your elusive daughter to come to a party, Mr. Kellerman. Of course you'll go. It'll do you good, darling. Besides, uh, orders are orders. Mr. Harper is now my boss, too. Your boss? Well, I've, uh, I've asked your father to work with uh, our orchestra next season. We can use his kind of talent here, you know. My dad, that's wonderful. You see, we've got to keep the Kellermans happy. The man in the box office told me so. <laughs> oh, Dad, the two of us working together, I couldn't be happier. Couldn't you? I, uh, I've got a report on Jimmy Sullivan, dear. Mm. After Florida, he went to New Orleans with a wrestling bear. Oh. Then to Chicago with some sort of concession that closed last month. And now? Where is he now? They don't know. Oh, Dad. I, I've just got to find him. That argument we had was so stupid and silly. But this whole thing, the Hippodrome, it was all Jimmy's idea. Just don't confuse love and loyalty. You owe nothing to anyone. And Jimmy knows it. Does he? He wants to make good without Annette Kellerman. He knows you don't need him. Mm, but I do need him, Dad. He'll come to you when he has something to offer, but not before. The only thing you can be sure is that he'll be trying. I came to know Annette well as the months went by. 
It was so easy to fall in love with her. But I never knew for sure just where I really stood, if she'd forgotten Jimmy Sullivan or not. It was about at this time that a great sorrow came into Annette's life, the sudden death of her father. It's right here, Jimmy, here in the newspaper. It says he died while he was conducting the orchestra at the Hippodrome. He was a wonderful man, Doc. He never did get his conservatory. Uh, look, why don't you go and see it? No, no, and I don't want to talk about it. Okay. But come on, we've got to finish overhauling the uh, engine. Jimmy, look, about this airplane business, if you're not really serious about flying across the country now, are you? You bet your life I am. If I ever get this egg crate off the ground, we're going to hit pay dirt. I hope that's all we hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, hand me the wrench. <laughs> I'll be with you in a moment, Alfred. Nothing important. Fred just told me there's someone here to see you at the stage door. Oh, who is it? Oh, I really don't know. You seem very absorbed in that newspaper, Alfred. What's so interesting? Oh, I'm sorry. Here, look at the headline. Hmm. Twelve aviators to start coast-to-coast flight. Hmm, that's quite a stunt. Fifty thousand dollars in prizes. Poor fellows. They'll all be killed. Hmm. Well, shall I tell uh, Fred you're busy? Oh, oh, the man at the stage door. No, no, I'll see who it is. Oh, boy, what a dressing room. <laughs> well, I can't say you don't deserve it, Annette. <laughs> Come on in, Doc. Tell me all about yourself. I was never so surprised to see anyone in my life. Well, I, uh, I hate to bother you, Annette, but, well, somebody's got to talk Jimmy out of doing it. Doing what? That bug house air race. He's got his eye on that $50,000 pot and he you, took... You mean Jimmy's going to fly to California? Well, he's he's going to try. And you should see in what. But, Doc, he's no flyer. That's what I've been telling him. But you know Sullivan. I just thought maybe there was something you could figure out. Oh, well, when, when does he plan to start? Any time now. Perhaps tomorrow if the weather's right. We're out there at Montauk Point, so maybe... But Doc, you... Doc, I've got a performance tonight. Yes, I know. Well, don't worry. I'll be out there. I'll think of something. Thanks. Oh, and, and I'm so grateful you came to tell me. Just don't let them know. I'm in trouble enough now. <laughs> All right, I won't, Doc. Thanks again. And that was at Montauk Point early the next morning. Jimmy was just about to take off. Hey, I'm sorry, Mr. Sullivan. You must have called under the ropes. You want me to get rid of her? Get rid of her? Why, this is a very famous personality, Annette Kellerman, the well-known lecturer. Jimmy Sullivan, I don't care what happens to you, but Doc is a friend of mine, and I forbid you to take him on this flight. You see what I mean? Greatest lecturer of her day. You heard me, Jimmy. Well, that's sweet of you, baby, but you don't have to worry about Doc. He's not leaving the ground. He's driving the repair car. That's me, Annette. Still the guy in the rowboat. You all ready, Mr. Sullivan? Right. Jimmy... Please don't force me to take drastic action. Drastic action? Why, I've never forced you to do anything, honey, remember? Okay, Doc, let's get her started. Mr. Glover, please. Yes, ma'am. You James Sullivan? Well, here's a summons for you, Mr. Sullivan. Your flying machine has been attached. Look, go away. Sorry, it's a court order. Court order for what? Non-payment of money owed to Annette Kellerman. That's right, and don't look so surprised. I had an accounting of all the books when you ran the concession at Revere Beach. There's a personal item marked $200, and you can explain it in court. Oh, oh, that. Well, I'm sorry, honey. Here. Here's the item in question. It's a diamond ring. You can sell it somewhere. Okay, Doc, turn it over. Thanks for trying, honey. Clear the field. Clear the field, ladies. You're on stage in five minutes, dear. Yes. Yes, I know. Still reading the newspapers. Well? Well, there's nothing new, Alfred. I'll say one thing for this air race. It certainly captured the attention of the country, to say nothing of yours. I'm sorry. You want very much for him to win, don't you? I? Well, well of course I, I mean I... You figure he'll have $50,000. He can come to you, carry you off in a white charger. All very simple. The American success story... Darling, I know how importantly this man looms in your life, but do allow me the privilege of criticizing my competition. Maybe he will win. I hope he does. But it still won't work. You're a big league, and Sullivan, he, he's a will-o'-the-wisp, looking for that fast dollar, the big ballyhoo that'll make him a seven-day wonder. 
Uh, it probably isn't news to you that I love you very much. What's important is that I think I can make you happy. Will you marry me, Annette? Alfred, <laughs> believe it or not, this is the very first marriage proposal I've ever had. It's, it's a little overpowering. Too overpowering to give me a quick yes, huh? Well, can I, can I wait until after the show? You can wait as long as you want to, darling. I'll be around when you're ready to tell me. All right, then, dear. Tonight. But once again, Jimmy Sullivan crossed our paths. During the show, a telegram arrived for Annette from Doc. Jimmy had crashed. He wasn't badly hurt, but they'd taken him to a hospital. Annette put through a phone call immediately. I didn't even talk to him, Alfred. He'd already left the hospital. Really? They, they patched up his arm and, and he left. Uh, where did he go? Well, they don't know. All they know is that, well, he's gone. I suppose Annette forgot all about my proposal and the answer I was waiting for. In a way, I couldn't blame her. Some months later, shortly before Christmas, a friend of mine from Hollywood dropped by, a movie producer named Garvey. The great challenge, Harper, and a wonderful new medium. If you could only persuade her to come out there. Well, haven't you talked to Annette about it? Well, no, I thought you were handling her affairs. Well, don't let that fool you. I advise her, but uh, she's a lady who makes up her own mind. <laughs> ah. Hollywood. Hmm. Might be a good idea for her. Might even be a good change for me. For you? No, oh, sorry. I'm just thinking out loud. Uh, well, suppose I ask her now. Well, she's here? Yes, she's uh, giving a little Christmas party this morning. Kids from the children's hospital. Come on, we'll, we'll both ask her. Well, I wish I could, but I'm supposed to meet my wife. Uh, let me know what she says, will you? I'll uh, call your hotel. Looks like a wonderful party, Annette. Oh, hello, Alfred. Only I'm a little jealous. Everybody seems to get a Christmas present but me. Poor, poor Alfred. <laughs> <laughs> well, what would you like? Most of all, I'd like an answer to a question I asked you last June. Oh. Well, it, it's yes, darling. The answer is yes. We left for Hollywood not long after. We had some wonderful plans. Annette would make her picture, then we'd be married and sail to Australia on our honeymoon. In New Mexico, a man came aboard the train. We ran into him in the dining car. It's so good to see you, Jimmy. Uh, you got over your accident, I see. There? Oh, oh yeah, long ago. Uh, Doc and I, we've, we've been out west. Oh, and everything's all right, huh? Well, naturally, naturally. Everything's fine, fine. I, uh... I read where you two are going to be married. Congratulations. Thank you, Jimmy. Yeah, it's, it's a great idea. About time you started raising a family of little swimmers. We, um, uh, well, we're not taking the big jump until Annette finishes her picture. Oh, you're, uh, making a picture, huh? Uh-huh. Well, as a matter of fact, I'm uh, going to Hollywood, too. Well, if we can be of any help, oh, now... Oh, thanks, but, uh, I've got a few contacts myself. Well, will they see my new star? Well, uh, it's nice seeing you. Lots of luck to you both. Thank you, Jimmy. Annette went right into her picture. There was no word from Jimmy, and I quite forgot about him. One morning at the studio... <laughs> well, Harper, with any luck, we'll finish the picture today. You know, Annette's been wonderful. Yeah. Now, if I could only persuade you two to postpone getting married, uh, there's another picture I... Uh, no, no, we're leaving here tonight. <laughs> I can't say that I blame you. Annette in her dressing room. You uh, ready for her? Well, if you don't mind ten, uh, telling her, we'll be all set in about ten minutes. This is the big moment, huh? The uh, scene in the tank. Oh, greatest scene in the whole picture. I'll uh, tell her. She'll be ready when you want her. Uh, thank you. How about it, Frank? Thanks, full, Mr. Garvey. Everything's ready. Well, just keep that water pouring in. It's holding 50,000 gallons now. Well, can't we raise the level? Well, it's glass, you know. Pretty solid, but why take chances? Mm, I guess you're right. Well, let's get those cameras set up. It, sweetheart. Garvey says you'll be finished right after this scene. You've been very patient, Alfred. It's <laughs> <laughs> just a pose. I've never been more impatient in my life. Uh, what are you looking for? Did you lose something? Well, 
I, I must have dropped it on the floor here. What is it? Oh, it's just sort of a good luck charm. It's a ring that I... Oh, uh, this ring? Oh. Oh, yes. Thank you, darling. Looks more like an engagement ring, isn't it? Well, I, I've been wearing it whenever I perform. It's silly, isn't it? No, not if it makes you feel any better. Ready, Miss Kellerman. I'll be right there, Frank. Uh, one take and we'll be on our way out of here. Well, huh? keep your fingers crossed. See you soon, dear. This was a big scene, an underwater ballet beautifully staged. Everything seemed to be going fine when suddenly Frank rushed up. The tank, Mr. Garvey. Huh? The glass is cracking. Get her out of there. It's going to split wide open. Get Miss Kellerman out of that tank. Hurry. Oh, 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 oh. But they had no time to get her out. The water roared out of the shattered tank, and the net was catapulted through the broken glass. I, uh, I've been here at the hospital every day, Mr. Harper. They, they won't let me see her. Yes, the nurses have mentioned how attentive you've been. Well, uh, how is she? Do they operate? This morning. We'll know very shortly now. Mr. Harper, before you go up, I'd like to talk to you. Oh, uh, this is Mr. Sullivan, Dr. Vance. How do you do, Mr. Sullivan? Doctor. She's resting comfortably. That's uh, all you can tell them. We know nothing for certain, Mr. No. Harper, except that Miss Kellerman's spine suffered a severe blow, what we call a spinal cord hematoma. We relieved the pressure, fortunately. There was no severance of the nerve tracks, but she'll have to face the fact that she may not have the use of her legs for quite some time. Does she know about this? She insisted on knowing before the operation. I, uh, I'd rather she didn't have any visitors right now. Later? Of course. Oh. Mr. Harper, whatever is humanly possible to do for her, we'll do. The rest is up to Miss Kelvin. Uh, yes, I, I know we're in very capable hands. Check with you later in the day, huh? Annette. Annette. Jimmy. Well, maybe I maybe I shouldn't be here, honey. The, the nurse told me you were asleep. Oh, Jimmy. I'm so glad to see you. You? You're you're looking swell. Oh. I I'll, I'll be up and wrong in no time at all. Oh, that's great. It, it it's just a a sprain or some such thing. Um How's your picture coming along? Oh, it's all finished. They're taking a prince to New York tonight. Oh, I've been hearing about it. I hear it's just wonderful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Imagine starring a dog. What's his name? Rin Tin Tin. <laughs> what a funny name. Is it, is it Chinese? French. Oh, Jimmy. Annette, darling, please. <laughs> oh, baby, don't let it catch you, please. The doctor, he... He may know medicine, but there are a lot of things about people he doesn't know. He doesn't know about a little girl with braces back there in Australia. They told her the same thing, too. He doesn't know how she hobbled every day to the water, learning to swim before she could walk. How she became the greatest swimming star in the whole world. Oh, there are a lot of things that doctors don't know, honey, including what I once told you. Wet, you're terrific. Dry, you ought to marry some guy and settle down. Jimmy, I... Well, I... I just wanted to tell you that you're... You're going to beat this thing. You and Harper together. He's a terrific guy, honey. Unlucky, uh, is a better word. Alfred. Jimmy's right, darling. You'll beat this thing, sure. The way you've beaten everything else. And as for you... I know I shouldn't be here, but I, I had to see her. That's not what I was going to say. I, I... I don't know why you should get this kind of a break. You don't rate it. You struck gold once, and, and you never had the sense to stake a claim. You're a crazy, vagabond Irishman with both feet firmly planted in midair. But you're what the doctor ordered. Just you see that you make her happy, that's all. Alfred. Goodbye, darling. You'll be up and around soon and rehearsing a new act. And when you do, remember, I'm holding you to your contract with the Hippodrome. Oh, uh, uh, Jimmy, this this ring, they were keeping it downstairs in the hospital safe. Thank you. Well, I'll uh, see you at the Hippodrome. How did he know about this ring? It belongs to me. It took a court order before I got it the first time. And I can do it again if I have to. I don't think you have to, darling. Here they are, after a million dollars worth of entertainment. Esther Williams and Walter Pitch. A million dollars worth? 
That isn't how my contract's for tonight, Reed. Uh-uh. How about James Sullivan, William Johnstone as Mr. Kellerman, Eddie Marr as Doc, Joe Kearns as Garvey, Barney Phillips as the prosecutor, Will Wright as the judge, Herb Butterfield as the doctor, and Fred Mackay, Robert Griffin, Issa Ashdown, James Nusser, and Ken Christie. Our radio play was adapted by S.H. Barnett, and our music was composed and directed by Rudy Schrager.